can an ordinary user start earning in the crypto market without big initial investments? Okay, no matter if you are a newbie or an experienced crypto user, you need to know how to do your own research. It's especially useful when the new growth cycle begins to find the best crypto projects and of course, make some cash. So it's better to study now to succeed later, right? This is our third video on DYOR. And if you didn't see the previous two, you should do it right now, starting off with part one. So come back here after that. Okay, as you know, tokenomics is a vital aspect of analyzing projects. That's why let's explore how tokens are distributed in different rounds. First, we have seed slash strategic round. That is an early investment round with major funds. Important to have long vesting, like around one and a half years and a reasonable price, at least double the public round. Vesting should not exceed 10% at token generation event. Number two, private round. It involves supportive slash funds and influencers. Have longer vesting, like about 12 months and price close to seed slash strategic round. Short vesting or low price is unfavorable here. So it's like a balanced round between seed and public that we're gonna talk about next. Number three, public round. Has best conditions, but small allocations, usually like 12 to 15% of total rise. Large public raise may indicate belief in the community or lack of understanding. Speaking of price, it's quite high here, but not good if over three times the earliest round. Next, we have team and advisors. Here, advisors basically receive tokens for their assistance. Quick unlocks like 90% of cases suggest self-interest. Reasonable cliffs in that round have four, five months for advisors and one year for the team. The allocation should not exceed 23, 25% of the total supply. Next, we have liquidity. Liquidity is the tokens added to DEXs and CXs for trading, including those sold during the listing. It stabilizes the token price and prevents immediate profit taking. And by the way, in this round, market makers strategically sell the remaining tokens during the listing period. This approach temporarily affects the price, yes, but enables the project to repurchase tokens and maintain a desirable trajectory. Listing on DEX and Basic CX provides a liquidity pool of approximately $300,000. And lastly, we have marketing and treasury. These tokens are obtained by the project at no cost and have a vesting period. They are used for community incentives, rewards, airdrops, and marketing activities. Market access for these tokens is usually restricted based on the project's marketing strategy. Well, ideally, marketing and treasury tokens should not exceed 10% of the total supply to minimize risks of mismanagement or marketing manipulation. The project team retains control over these tokens for their intended purpose or alternative applications. Marketing capitalization and fully diluted valuation. Market cap is calculated by multiplying the total token supply by the public token price. It reflects the project's value after four or five years when all tokens are in circulation. Basically, the market cap determines a project's market presence. However, two projects with similar tokenomics can have vastly different valuations based on token price. So, higher valuations indicate more market presence, while lower valuations raise some concerns. So, let's have a look at some stats. $10 million or more, valuation is promising. $20 million, valuation is reasonable. 50 mils, valuation requires a strong team and solid backing. $150 million, valuation indicates tier one projects with reputable backers. And that's why you should avoid overvaluing projects with no track record. 
Otherwise, the project may face significant setbacks. For example, inexperienced teams that raise funds with valuations exceeding like $20 million or more often result in oversupply, price volatility, and a drop in valuation. And eventually, this can lead to a 95% price decrease from the listing price. So that's ouch. Okay, the lower the market capitalization during the TGE, the greater the potential for the project's token price on listings. It means fewer tokens are initially available, reducing sell pressure. However, a low market cap indicates that more tokens will enter the market later. If you don't sell your tokens during the first price surge, more people will like you to do so later. And yeah, projects that intentionally lower their market cap often experience their highest token price right after listing. But it tends to drop significantly afterward. So holding 20 or 30 times your investment for a year is nearly impossible without constant reinvestment. Therefore, a low market cap during the TG is only good for selling, not buying. Overall, when considering buying from the market, it's advised to check the circulation supply on platforms, for example, like CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko, and of course, ensure at least 40% of the total supply is available. Also, you should examine the tokenomics, basically to understand local periods, especially for pre-sale tokens. For example, buying a token at $2 today May seem like a good deal, but if a quarterly pre-sale lockup, like currently valued 10 or 20 times higher, is scheduled in just five days, the price could quickly drop to one or 1.2 dollars. Besides staking or using the project's platform, there isn't much utility for these tokens, so you should pay attention to what the project's community asks about token utility and how the team responds to that. Also, look for deflationary models like buybacks or token burns and how they plan to implement them. However, remember that tokenomics isn't legally binding, so it's more like a statement of intentions from the team. And if they validate these conditions, there isn't much that can be done except, well, to express disappointment privately. Airdrops or retro drops. Now, let's discuss the most vital way to earn cryptocurrencies without significant investments. So, retro drops are when projects give away tokens to their community for certain actions, rewarding early supporters. As you can guess, it often happens in the very early stages. So now let's break down why do projects use such retro drops. First, of course, hype, and it is a must here. For example, Aptos project had roughly 30,000 Twitter mentions or so, but by giving retro drops to over 100,000 people, mentions quickly grew to hundreds of thousands, creating FOMO. And as you can guess, it's a significant boost. Next, attention shows community value. Major projects usually allocate big budgets for retro giveaways during the TGE to indicate high. Thirdly, legal issues are a concern here. The SEC can harm projects for violations, especially if tokens are considered securities. That's why big projects choose retro drops instead of token sales. For example, the same Aptos distributed tokens to their community, rewarding testnet participants and those who completed KYC and minted a special NFT, thus avoiding problems with the SEC. And lastly, valuing the community is just a good practice. Reputable projects allocate millions for giveaways, incentivizing followers and building a good reputation. But projects that don't value early supporters usually face FUD, killing interest in the product altogether. And by the way, have you guys ever participated in retro drops before? So does this topic sound promising to you? Just leave a comment about that. 
Okay, let's go back to the topic and let's see how you can potentially be eligible for such retro jobs. Here are main things that projects usually consider. Wallet activity. How active your wallet is in participating in the project. Next, contributions in the early stages. The support you provide during the project's early development. Level of activity in the project. How engaged you are with the project's activities. Next, interactions with different applications like dApps. Your involvement with various decentralized applications. This criterion is especially important for layer 1 and layer 2 solutions. Next, number of users. The size of the project's user base. A small project with a huge community just cannot distribute a lot of money. So they'll pick only the best accounts. Okay, that's not even it. Here are three best places where you can search for retro drops. First, Dune Analytics, then VC Investment Aggregator, and finally, Twitter. Personally, I prefer Dune Analytics as it is a free platform with limitless capabilities. But still, if you can have access for VC Investment Aggregator, it's a great source of insights. And of course, Twitter. And by the way, we spoke about that in our previous guide, just check it out. Okay, the final but crucial point is the key factors when selecting projects to participate in. First, funds in investment value. Projects with the base of $1 million and tier 10 funds usually can't distribute a large retro drop to many participants. So instead, look for projects with major American venture capitalists inventing tens of millions of dollars. Next, experience. Research past success slash failure stories to gain a better understanding of what to focus on. So basically, study previous retro drops, methods of distributed coins, techniques to prevent abuse, and important factors for success. In third, avoid excessive hype. Just don't participate in projects that can accommodate tens or hundreds of thousands of people. Look for projects with significant use cases and substantial funding for mass adoption. Next, team community relationship. Analyze the project's presence on social media platforms like Twitter or Discord, and pay attention to how they interact with community and content they share. And next, just trust your intuition. Rely on your experience and don't feel the need to participate in too many projects. Just finding two, three high quality ideas can be more beneficial for you than chasing just quantity over quality. Ultimately, it's important to find a strategy that works especially for you. Well, personally, I prefer immersing myself fully in a few projects, understanding all details, and then just staying motivated and confident in my choices. So, in my opinion, retro jobs deserve your attention over any other opinion in the market, as it doesn't require a lot of money to start with. However, you can explore DeFi, p or NFTs for promising projects. Well, perspectives are still there. But be sure to always do your own research first.